it's Joanna. I'm the national president of JSA Poland. Hello everyone, this is Damien, the CEO of QP. We would like to invite you to the new podcast series about business and lifestyle. Hi everyone, welcome to JCI Inspires. This is our first podcast and we are very happy to welcome Piotr Schultz, who is our first uh, guest, a very uh, experienced podcaster and uh, radio presenter. Uh, he's running interviews in uh, radio in Poznan and I'm really happy to hear more details about his story just in a second. But before we move to that part, I would like to introduce also uh, Damian Rapajczak, who is the uh, entrepreneur, person who is fascinated by uh, video filming and is a great uh, team player, runs a team uh, which is dispersed in several countries. So uh, we will be combining a number of perspectives to see how uh, to run a business in the uh, current times, especially during uh, the challenging uh, changes that we're all going through. So. Uh, Damien, I would like to uh, hear a bit from you and uh, then we will move to the questions and some personal stories from Piotr. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Joanna, for the introduction. So to say a little bit more about me in a few words, uh, I'm focused on two projects. Uh, one is the marketing agency, Silver Marketing, and the other is uh, medical uh, education slash medical app uh, for medical students for them to practice knowledge uh, the name of the app is QP um, and we me and Joanna we decided to start this project and experiment with uh, technology to see whether our community will like it or not so we would really appreciate your feedback on this if you like this kind of style uh, of the interviews. We will definitely deliver more interviews. And our today's guest is an incredible person uh, that has way more experience in what we just tried to do. Um, so Piotr Schultz, can you tell us a little bit more about you? Hey guys, thanks for having me. Um, it's it's a pleasure. I usually host um, interviews, so I'm very happy to, to be a guest here. And uh, and like you said, I, I've, I've been um, doing some um, radio work, let's call it like this, for, for over a year and a half. Um, I've been conducting interviews on uh, MC Radio here in Poznan, interviewing interesting people from all over, all over the world that happen to be in Poznan. Mm, and obviously now times have uh, changed, so uh, we cannot uh, meet in a, in a radio studio. Mm -hmm. So I, similarly to what we are doing now, I, I conduct interviews over the internet, which, you know, it, which can be a problem, but in many cases, I would say it's a chance because we don't have to um, go to the studio, spend time on traveling to the studio. You know, it's easier to, to find a person because, you know, people are at home um, and they have more free time. So, so I guess it is kind of an opportunity. Great. And could you tell us um, the short story of how you actually uh, started running your show? Because I know it's a very interesting background and that was an ongoing project. So how uh, did you actually get invited to continue this initiative? Oh, thank you for this question. That's, that's a very good question. Um, the person that originated or created and came up with that idea um, is Maciek Kautz. Maciek Kautz, um, I think it was about seven years ago now, um, created this uh, show um, because he really wanted to, to, to put something new in the, uh, on the map of, of radio shows, on, of TV shows in, in Poznan, something that had, had not been done before. So he came up with this idea of interviewing foreigners on the radio. And uh, he had been doing this for about five years. And at some point, he felt that he needed some new projects. Um, he got involved in hosting bigger events. And, and he decided to pass this to me and, and uh, my co-host, Max Krug. And uh, since October 2018, we've been doing this um, on MC Radio. And also, we are available on Spotify, Anchor, 
um, so you can you can listen to us 24 7 basically um, and yeah so so that, that's that's the story 2018 um, that was a big uh, big year for me and and I had been a fan of the show for many many years and finally I was able to host the show so that was a, a huge game changer that's great. Was there some sort of a casting or were you the obvious choice for the, the role of presenter? Uh, that's, that's a very good question as well. Um, it was me and Max and kind of fought against each other. We could say fought, but in a friendly way, in a friendly way. And the idea was to have one host of the show, but, but the director of the radio station decided to have um, both of us. And that was, that was a great choice because me and Max kind of complement each other. We have completely different accents in English as well because he um, uh, have spent he has spent most of his time in Australia, so he's got that Australian accent. I, I spent uh, some time in the UK, and I think I have a mixture some between the American accent and the, and the British accent. So, so it only benefits the show, I would say. That's cool. And how does it translate to? Uh, the other project that you're running, because I know you're running International Post 9, which is a, uh, a regular meetup where you're connecting people and you also run your own company, your firm uh, in <clears throat> the educational business. So maybe a few words on that. True. Well, it, it kind, it's kind of connected, right? So all those, all those free projects um, are related to English. Um, and I would say it really helps, right? Because, uh, for example, with the educational uh, activity, um, shows like International Poznań is homework for uh, my students very often. For my students very often, so they they have to listen <laughs> to the show uh, sometimes. But hopefully, they they like it, and and you know, thanks to that, they can really get to know other countries uh, and they can learn English through you know through fun, basically. And, and international meetings, Pozna international events that you mentioned, um, it's a great way for me to find guests uh, for my show. Well, it used to be because now I can't uh, have those meetings anymore, at least for some time. But back in the day, it was a great way for me to meet people, to meet interesting and passionate people and invite them uh, on, the, on the show. So, so that, was, that was a great process because, you know, you can, you can meet people, your future guests in a casual atmosphere and then kind of uh, expand on this one and and dig deeper into their personalities on on the show and show them to the to the world so that is a that is a terrific experience and that means that you have a different approach now no? uh i mean you are now stuck home and you have to find those guests somehow how do you do that yes um uh, I use my old connections, let's say, so people that that I have known for for quite some time. But you know, I also monitor what's happening on on international forums. Um, I monitor uh, activity of uh, of different people, and and if I if I get inspired by someone, um, you know, why not? Let, let's interview this person. Let's let's show this potential to 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 other people. And and as I said, you know, interviewing uh, via the internet on Zoom or on Skype. Obviously, it means lower quality of sound, but on the other hand, it's easier to recruit and schedule than those uh, meetings. Yeah, because you know people are available um, now m much more than it used to be. They just so stuck for home. me, yeah, they are just stuck home like me, you know, and, and like other uh, people, other listeners, right? So, so in the radio, for example, we could interview people between 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. because that's when uh, sound engineers are available. But now I can do it, you know, any time. So, so that is a great opportunity. And, and I've interviewed very cool guests. I interviewed a, uh, last week I interviewed a, a professor from um, uh, Adam Mickiewicz University that is currently living in Moscow, right? So it would be difficult for me uh, to do that if we didn't have the coronavirus because I would have to invite people to the studio. Yeah, so so that's some kind of opportunity. Obviously, I miss having that uh, real contact, you know, being with someone in the studio, having that atmosphere. But, you know, for me, it's still about the people, right? As long as I can show the people, I, I don't exist. My show does not exist without the people. So as long as I can, you know, interview them, even on the internet with lower quality, it's still great. 
That's okay. cool. And what's your, first, what's your favorite story from uh, those that you've already heard on the show or maybe outside of the show? Whew, um, there are so many great stories. Like each each guest is a, is a completely different story, and um, it's very difficult to choose. Um, but I would say um, one of the stories that I really like is the story of a, a Filipino Polish uh, couple. So basically, um, there's a Polish guy and a, and a Filipino girl, and um, they met over the internet. Um, they had a conversation for i think about a, a year and they finally met in the philippines um uh, the guy flew uh, to the to the philippines swavek uh, to meet with marie that's her name and and he proposed to her after four days oh, wow. and <laughs> she was there for four days he proposed to first day i think he proposed to her family because that's his tradition then he proposed to to her and then after some time she moved um she moved to poland they they started living here together in 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 poznan so it's such a, a great love story because the age difference is quite quite big as well and um uh, and, and the distance was huge but they still managed to uh to 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 be together so so that is a, a very good um love story and it also shows you know, uh, the, the, how the technology can change your life as well yeah because if that happened if that had happened 20 years ago um, it would have been impossible for them to maintain that relationship but thanks to skype you know messenger whatsapp whatever it was so much easier for them to to maintain that love and and finally meet and 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 then get then get married so so i think that's that's a pretty good story that's amazing, and you're a romantic. If it's this, this is your favorite story amongst all the stories you've heard. <laughs> true, true. Um, yes, yeah, so it's very difficult to choose. Like every every story, every person, you know, um, brings something. And we very often interview people about their countries. Yes. Yeah? So for me, uh, getting to know those countries uh, that I had known very little about before the before that show you know this is this is something incredible yeah and and for me it's just a way of traveling to those countries without actually visiting them and and i think it's the same experience for our listeners piotr um i would like to transition to the origins uh because i believe this would be something for our listeners uh something very important uh how did you found yourself in running a business? How did, how oh, did running you start? a business. Yeah. Right. Um, basically, um, for some time, I, I had worked as a PR specialist. And, and, I'd, uh, and at some point, I decided that it was very, uh, very, I would say, um, tiring. And it was full of deadlines. And, and I, was, I was quite exhausted. You know, it's, it was a tough job. Um, it wasn't very well paid, I would say. So that was another problem, and and I decided to try something new, and and that's how I uh, set up my my language school using my experience of studying in the UK. I I studied in the UK for three years. I graduated there, came back to Poland, and I thought, you know, I could um, kind of transfer this experience and this knowledge and that that set of skills. Um, to my students and that was that was the idea and i wanted to show them some more practical uh, approach right so using that actual practical knowledge not necessarily learning the words that they uh, wouldn't need yeah so something that would really help them in life and that's why you know i i'm mostly specialized in business english and and also job interviews so very often i prepare people for job interviews in in english because that, that is a practical skill as well yeah i run a background checkup on you and uh, i saw that you have a lot of good reviews so uh they say that you have this approach of teaching your students how to speak the language so can you tell us about say your style of teaching so um basically i try to open them up because the problem is that if you're not very open in your own native language, then it will be even harder for you to be open in your second language. So I try to get to know my students and I have that personal approach. I, I, I want to know what they like, what they dislike, what they are interested in, what they hate. 
Um, and also, uh, the more I know, the better I can speak to them and, and have that personal approach. And, I, and, and, and my style is just, you know, finding that connection with that person. So it's more like a friend, I would say. I, I know it may sound weird because I'm still a teacher, right? But I, I need to be close to that people. So then they can open up and then we can have a conversation about, you know, if they if it's not a job interview, they just want to improve their speaking abilities about all those subjects that they may be interested in. And they are they have some knowledge about, you know, and then mm-hmm. then we can we can prove that. Because if we're gonna talk about stuff that they don't need, they are not interested in, you know, they don't feel motivated and i think it's all about motivation as well you know you need to be motivated to speak you need to be motivated to to improve your language skills if you don't have that motivation even even if you you know you 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 need to do it you don't have that motivation you're not going to succeed i've been there <laughs> so i know <laughs> who hasn't who hasn't who has <laughs> So it's actually quite interesting that you're combining the uh, sort of a customized service. So you're really uh, focusing on a specific person, but uh, you're also a bit of a coach, I would say. No, is it like are you, are you also trying to help them develop the skills that will be useful in practice? Yes, of course. Um, especially if they want to change their um, job, right, and they want to get promoted or something. It, yeah, I, I kind of use that. Through speaking English, you know, we can discuss so many motivational matters or all things related to coaching. And I try to be a little little bit like that, but I wouldn't call myself a coach because this is not what I'm specialized at. And and I'm specialized at teaching English. But yeah, you you know, I mostly have individual lessons because this is what I prefer. And and thanks to to that, you know, I, I can actually, you know, dig deeper and and speak to them about their personal matters and sometimes you know tell them you know maybe you should improve your confidence you know you can do it through this and that and yes and it's it's, it's, personal individual lessons are a little bit like like coaching sessions at times because you know we get to know uh, each other quite well after a few lessons sure that's interesting and um, do you also work the other way around so do you happen to teach Polish to foreigners who are trying to survive in our beautiful country. Oh, teaching Polish. Uh, yikes. Um, this is <laughs> this is a very tough job. I really admire all those uh, schools that teach Polish because I, I wouldn't be able to do that. You know, I can I can help foreigners, you know, learn basic words, uh, sometimes even swear words. I shouldn't say that, but yes, it, it does, does happen as well. But... <laughs> But just basic words, if, if, if they ask me, you know, about more uh, meaningful information, that would be a very tough job. So, so, so no, I, I think I'm, I'm not able to, to do that professionally at all. Hey, um, uh, one question that I think would be also very important is that um, how did you find yourself um, after the crisis? And say, maybe... There are two parts of the question. So first of all, what was your first reaction when that happened, right? And second of all, now, how do you deal with it? Right. Um, That's a very good question, Damien. Uh, My first reaction was the world will not be the same place when this is over. So we are going now for a transition period, right? And, And also it means the same for my business. So now I only teach online, so either uh, uh, by Skype or by Zoom. And, uh, you know, maybe when this is over, some of my students will want to um, stay with this form of, of uh, learning um, because it has a lot of advantages uh, as well. And, and it's so much easier because, you know, we, we don't have to spend time on commuting. They don't have to spend time on, on getting to 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 my place and it's so much uh, so much easier for them and obviously online lessons also have a lot of uh, other benefits you can use a lot of multimedia um, uh, for your lessons you can you can create some cool presentations and and i think it's 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 really useful so i kind of um, before that i i think i didn't really appreciate the value of online lessons i had some online lessons before but 
I don't think uh, I really liked it, but now I really like it. I really enjoy it, and and I think it it might I might have more online lessons even when this is uh, when this is over. Mm -hmm. And from the practical side, are you using any specific tools to uh, facilitate the learning? Of course. Um, for example, um, one one good platform that I could recommend for learning vocabulary is uh, Quizlet. So Quizlet is a really cool app. Um, so during uh, my lessons, I type all the words um, on Quizlet. And thanks to that, my students see this list and they can practice uh, those words after the, after the lesson. So there are all sorts of exercises, you know, with those particular words that we had on the lesson. So this is a very useful uh, this is a very useful tool. You know, there are so many other resources like British Council offers uh, so many, so many free uh, resources, both for teachers and students. So I think the, the um, list is endless. You just, you can find on the internet almost anything. You don't have to use any course books these days. You just need to know how to find uh, all those resources. And I think also this is what children should be taught in school, not to memorize all those definitions, but how to find information quickly, the right information, and how to be able to filter that. And I think this is what a lot of young people lack, you know, that they can do a lot of stuff on the internet, but it's not quality sometimes, and they, they don't know what's worth their attention and what is not worth their attention. And it's the same with resources for, for learning, right? So many resources on the internet, endless opportunities. You just need to know how to find it and take the, the right tool. That's really interesting insight and um, I can also share something from experience because um, we were running um, as JCI and friends, we were running a volunteering teaching program for two years and we were addressing it to uh, kids uh, in the unprivileged economic situation as well as kids in orphanages and foster care. And um, as a founder of the program, I was also collecting feedback from my volunteers and one of the most striking stories was a story of a 16 year old girl who was very shy she wasn't really super open to speak polish but at some point she actually started a very in-depth discussion of about philosophy with her irish uh, teacher volunteer who was running the class and he was so stunned because he wasn't expecting this at all and it turned out that the girl was doing the research on philosophy on her own on youtube and that's how she was broadening her vocabulary and her speaking skills as well. So um, you are so right in saying that the internet has so many resources. And I think it's really important to tap into the passion of people that uh, we're working with so that they actually know how to use those resources. But I really love this story. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, it's a great story that, you know, on the internet, you can find almost anything. You can find tutorials to do, you know, almost almost anything. And and as I said, you know, the most important part is to to you know really focus on how to find the right information, what you what you need in a short amount of time, because you can spend hours on YouTube watching something that is totally worthless, is trash. And and I think this is the problem of our times that you know, although we have so much interesting stuff on the internet, we keep on watching things that really don't matter. And I, I find myself in the same situation from time to time as well. Such a, this it's a problem. Do you have TikTok, Bjorn No, no, no. I, I'm familiar with the concept. I'm familiar with this concept, but no, I think uh, I, it will take some time for me to, to be on TikTok. I know it's super popular, especially among teenagers, but not yet, not yet. But I see the value. I see the marketing value as well, that even our um, uh, president, Andrzej Duda, is on TikTok now. Wow. And, and yeah, so, you know, maybe I will be on TikTok too. Who knows? You know, it's a sort of a marketing tool as well. It is. But, it is. Um, absolutely. So actually, I know that you have a university background in marketing. And do you see how it uh, works in practice for you um, in terms of your uh, business and um, uh, expanding your visibility online nowadays? Yes, of course. So um, what I liked about my studies in the UK at uh, Bax University in Highwycombe was that it, they had a very practical approach. I 
only had uh, lecturers who were practitioners. So they could actually teach us, you know, how it is in the, in the business. And uh, at that time, that was a long time ago, um, the online presence wasn't as important as it is now, but what they taught us is this ability to think critically and to easily adapt. And I think, yes, and now, now the most important thing about marketing is that you need to quickly adapt. So you need to find um, uh, sources on the internet, resources on the internet, uh, that can help you to promote your 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 business. That's why you know we set up an Instagram account for uh, for international Poznan, and and there are other ways you know that we should we should follow. And maybe TikTok, you know, is is also another another way to 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 promote our radio show, promote meetings, or promote my um, educational uh, activity. And you know, I'm I'm a little bit lazy. I need to say that <laughs> I, I I'm aware of the potential of so many tools. Just sometimes I don't have enough motivation to realize all of them. And I'm aware of it. And I'm, I'm working on it and I'm trying to familiarize myself with all those tools and finally put that into, into practice. So keep, keep, keep your fingers crossed for me. <laughs> <laughs> Is this one of the reasons we don't have a website for now? Because we were trying to do the research and there's no website. Yes, yes I do. I, do, I have one website. Um, Basically, the way I work, there's this website called uh, Eco Repetitie, and probably this is the most well-positioned website on the on the internet and how people find me usually. Because I just think that if I had my own website, nobody would really use this website. And I also see that a lot of businesses they don't have uh, websites these days anymore. Sometimes a LinkedIn account is now enough. I'm on LinkedIn, and, and this is how. how who contact me and I, I don't really need to look for for um clients that match these these days so i don't think a website would would make a difference it's more just like some sort of background check if somebody wants to see you and maybe some credibility uh I, idea but for now uh i i i don't think i need a i need a website it wouldn't make such a big difference to me in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's actually more about community now and the fact that you are in conversation with that community. And it's hard to be in a conversation on your website unless you run a blog regularly, yeah. which is another work to do, right? <laughs> that's true. That's true. And you need to update this website all the, all, all the time. So it's more, I think websites now in my business, I think they more sort of um they are more sort of uh, business cards let's say so this is how people treat them rather mm -hmm. than some actual source of uh, knowledge i would say what about other people in your brand uh Pardon? sorry can, can, like... you, can you repeat can you repeat sorry joanna no i was just saying that it's very interesting as approach and actually this could be an interesting conclusion also for our audience that you don't necessarily need to start with um, having the website and investing a lot of time and effort in that if you can leverage other tools that are there. So uh, yeah. this is a, a new approach, to be honest, that I hear, and maybe it's also worth considering. Of course, of course. I think it is uh, because, you know, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram and Facebook have a much, much bigger impact than a website. Because the problem with website is how it is positioned on the uh, in Google search, for example, if you create a website and it's not really viewed by many people, it's going to be far, far away. And if you are on LinkedIn, Facebook or Instagram, it's much easier and much more cost effective, cost, cost effective, sorry, to, to reach your target audience. This is, and this is the difference in my opinion. Okay. Uh, I was going to ask you about, uh, other people in your industry, if you have checked what they do during this crisis and uh, maybe something that you picked up from them or the other way around or you know some kind hmm. of inspiration I, I think they're they're doing pretty much the same thing as as i've been doing recently is that transition to the online to the virtual world and and i know that they they have lost a lot of um clients students especially um in companies right i also have a couple of uh, groups in, in companies and I and I don't have any lessons with them because I think it when with bigger groups all my lessons 
are not that effective. If you have a group of uh, nine, ten people, it can be pretty off-putting to to have so many people on one screen, and and it's just not the same as as if you gather it together in 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 one room. So for smaller groups and individual lessons, yes, uh, online for sure, and this is my main target. But for for bigger groups, I know that they are uh, they are struggling. But a great example is um, uh, is a kindergarten here in in Poznan called um, Cards and Peace, uh, run by um, Joe Stevenson um, from from the UK, uh, and uh, she, which is amazing, she does a lot of her activity online. So children are at home with their parents, and she is in her um, in her facility. And she conducts lessons uh, online through, through Skype or Zoom. And, and, and from what I've uh, seen, it's been working very, very well. So this is a great approach as well, that you can have kindergarten activities online. So this had, uh, had not been done before. But is it uh, mostly I mean, one way? Uh, I mean, she is presenting and they are listening or they also interact? How is it done? Uh, they also interact. They also interact as well. They also interact as well. So obviously she needs to, to manage that interaction in a, in a different way, but they also interact, right? So uh, it's a lot of, you know, there are dance lessons, I think, chemical lab as well. I'm not sure about that. I would have to check that, but definitely dance lessons. Um, and obviously it's interesting that she communicates uh, in English, right, so with, with them, and and it's, it's it's working, and you know they 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 do some activities and they don't stop uh, developing, right? So this is this is great, and so it's, it's constant uh, progress. And I know that it's just because she has a private kindergarten, because with a public one, I'm not sure if that will be possible. So she's got just more sort of flexibility to do that. So interesting. Thing. So uh, actually some innovation in business and education to run a kindergarten online. And it also shows that kindergarten is not just a place where kids uh, spend their time and play with their peers, but they actually uh, develop their skills and that's yeah. uh, on the language level and all the, all the other levels. So Of course, also this is the difference between the private um, kindergartens and public ones that very often with public ones, they're more sort of treated as a place where parents can leave their children and and just uh, go have fun go to work <laughs> go have fun or go to work yeah exactly and and i think with very often with private kindergartens they offer some sort of added uh, value and this is what joe has been uh, has been offering that you know they can do so many different activities that develop all sorts of skills a variety of skills so um, this is this is a great approach and this is a, a great example of how uh, the technology uh, can help us be be flexible and, and adaptable at the same time. That's so great to hear. Um, I know uh, that we need to be respectful of the time and we, uh, we will be wrapping up soon, but I'm really uh, inspired by all the interesting examples you shared, you shared so far. Uh, would you like to uh, add some uh, final notes uh, or some nuggets of wisdom that our audience could use in their uh, lives and in business? Well, I would say, you know, be, be flexible and use that opportunity. I know for a lot of us, it does, doesn't seem like an opportunity to be stuck at home and not being able to go on holiday, for example, but it is it is time where we can develop a lot of our skills and there's so much stuff on the internet, whether we want to learn a language, whether we want to um, learn something about marketing, this is the time, this is the time. Because later when everything hopefully is open, we won't have that time because we will be focused on other things. So think about your development, think about how you can organize this uh, free time and how you can change your lives, at least slightly, you know, you don't have to, you know, uh, turn it upside down. It's just about, you know, finding this, this uh, right time to do things for your future and, and just focus on that. And I think that'll be, that'll be great. Thank you so much for sharing this. And this is very useful. Uh, Piotr Damian, thank you very much for the conversation. I will be very happy to continue this, uh, on another time, I think we had only started uh, this uh, interesting topic and let's uh, Just touch set the up shelf. the next meeting. <laughs> Just scratch the surface. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much, John. It's been a pleasure.